Hello and welcome to uh, day 2 of the first week of this lecture series. So, uh, in the first class we uh, learnt about uh, various different possible applications uh, and the real uh, life applications of lasers and uh, I tried to convince you that uh, it is worth learning uh, a little bit about this laser. Uh, so, uh, how we are going to uh, do it throughout the course. So, at this point I would like to uh, very quickly tell you about my plans. So, first uh, few lectures we will concentrate on uh, learning the fundamentals of lasers. Uh, the unique properties we mentioned about certain unique properties coherence, collimated, monochromaticity, high power and so on. Now, how do they uh, you know originate Okay, uh, and little bit uh, in in greater detail, we will learn about those uh, you know uh, properties. Then we will uh, you know go into the laser instrumentations. So we will talk about the technicalities. So knowing the principle of laser action, how one can uh, you know go and make a laser. So, what are the different types of lasers one can make uh, one you know uh, we will look into those things and uh, what are the different uh, types of applications uh, of different types of lasers that uh, you know one can achieve that we will talk about it. And uh, uh, last uh, three weeks or uh, nearly four weeks of this course uh, we will concentrate on the application part where uh, we will uh, go from uh, little bit basic applications to quite advanced level of applications. So, as I said uh, in my first lecture there will be food for everyone in this course. So, uh, we will try to keep uh, this course uh, as less mathematical as possible uh, wherever it is necessary of course we have to uh, otherwise we would like to uh, you know keep it uh, uh, pretty much basic. Now, uh, let us uh, let us try to you know uh, look into the basic things about uh, the laser. So, in order to know about laser first I need to know what is the full form of this term called laser. So, I have laser I am sure many of you have learnt about at least this you know uh, full form of laser for those who do not let me explain it. So, this laser has a full form as light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Now, if I take out this part, I get my laser. Now, if I look into each and every term here, then I have one main thing is light. Oh, it deals with light. Now, uh, let me ask you a question here is laser a process or it is a device. So, is it a process or a device? The answer is both. What we have written here that light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation this is a process and this process is called laser process and 
the device which you know uh, brings about this process is also known as laser so they are synonymous so you can use it for the device as well as when you are talking about the process you call it a laser process so here again coming back to this process we have a term called light and what kind of light that also comes out from this particular uh, statement that is stimulated emission of radiation. So, at least I can see that the stimulated emission of radiation whatever that is gives rise to some light. What kind of light? This light is amplified. So, if I do not know anything, I just want to understand from this acronym what is this process, then it tells me that if I induced a process called stimulated emission by giving some light, then that light is amplified probably many many times many fold and this process gives rise to my laser action okay so when i say about stimulated emission of radiation there is also a term called emission so in order to understand this laser process or laser action, we have to know what is stimulated emission and for that matter what is an emission, how emission occurs. Okay. So, we need to learn about uh, different uh, physical processes that takes place when light interacts with matter. So, if I want to uh, know about uh, laser, I need to okay. So, now uh, Okay. So now uh, we we will talk about uh, uh, detail laser action. We will uh, explain in detail uh, in a while uh, about the different light matter interactions. Learn about absorption, emission, stimulated emission, and then how the stimulated you know emission yields light which gets amplified to give laser output. Before going into that detail, uh, which is our main aim, we should know a little bit about the history of laser invention. Okay. So, by now you know that okay, we need to know about uh, stimulated emission, okay. then we can go to the laser action. So, how this you know uh, effort of getting something like a laser started when did it start let us have a look at that let us have a walk through the history of laser development. So, uh, there are two people who uh, without whom uh, nothing of this sort nothing like laser or anything would be possible at all they are Max Planck and Albert Einstein. Uh, you may not find a very direct relation uh, between you know Max Planck uh, uh, to the laser uh, discovery immediately, but if you think about the idea of uh, you know having a transition between two states in an atom or ion or molecule. Uh, 
uh, by a definite amount of energy, discrete amount of energy which is termed as a quantum. If that idea was not there, if that idea was not given by Max Planck, we would not uh, achieve anything like laser at all, we would not have the idea of stimulated emission. So, the idea of uh, this, uh, you know, discrete transitions uh, by absorbing a certain amount of light, certain quanta of light uh, given by uh, Max Planck, uh, you know, helped uh, developing the field of quantum mechanics. Now, this was at the time of 1900. In you know, five years from that, Albert Einstein uh, wrote his famous uh, paper on photoelectric effect, which uh, of course uh, led to uh, Nobel Prize uh, uh, for Albert Einstein. And uh, in this photoelectric effect, one thing came out also that uh, you know. Uh, this light has a particle nature which is photon. So, like uh, which uh, you know uh, in some way it supports the uh, Planck's uh, work. Now, uh, the main idea of something like laser came from a work of Albert Einstein again in 1917, uh, he first talked about this stimulated emission, we will talk about that in a while. So, what he said that uh, before this quantum mechanics uh, was there, uh, people knew about absorption of light, they knew emission of light without any external perturbation, that means emission spontaneously or spontaneous emission, there is another thing called stimulated emission. So, Einstein talked about this stimulated emission and <coughs> uh, this process if can be amplified, then one can get lasers. So, that 1917, the work done by Einstein in 1917 actually uh, uh, forms the basis of laser development. So, from then people tried to develop a device which could uh, amplify, which could first generate stimulated emission in a controlled way and then amplify and generate that amplified radiation. Now, it was done in 19. 17 by Albert Einstein, but it took nearly 40 years, 43 years actually to materialize this. So, how did you know uh, it happen? So, uh, we will soon see that uh, though you know when we talk about laser first thing comes to our mind is you know uh, in optical frequency, things happening in optical frequency. Now, we will we'll learn uh, in a while that uh, uh, getting uh, an amplified output from a stimulated emission process is easier at longer wavelength, but very tough at shorter wavelengths. So, high frequency generation is difficult. So, uh, at optical frequency, uh, getting this amplified stimulated emission was a fairly uh, big challenge. So, the first successful uh, uh, formation of a device which could uh, you know deliver an amplified radiation you know born out of stimulated emission was in the microwave frequency range and this was called at that point of time as 
microwave amplification of stimulated emission of radiation or in short it is called measure. So, measure was the first step towards uh, inventing laser that is at optical frequency. The you know uh, the person who who basically drove this research and uh, became successful was Charles Townes. So, Charles Townes at Columbia University uh, while working with some of his colleagues Herbert Ziegler and uh, James Gordon, he uh, first got this uh, measure which uh, uses ammonia as the gain medium we will know what a gain medium is. So, <clears throat> this development of measure at least proved the point that Einstein made in 1970 way back then. Still there was no realization of this you know uh, amplified stimulated emission at optical frequency. Uh, when uh, Townes was working at Columbia University at the same time there were a uh, couple of uh, scientists at uh, Lebedev uh, Institute uh, in Moscow, Nikolai Basov and uh, Alexander Prokhorov, they were also trying to develop laser. Now, they were building uh, oscillator which is very much required oscillator or resonator you uh, you need it for making a device like laser. So, uh, they were also working at that uh, point of time and we will see that these two uh, people you know Basov and Prokhorov uh, uh, they uh, also uh, got the Nobel Prize uh, shared the Nobel Prize with Taunus. Now, uh, there are many other people who were working in the field of maser and trying to develop laser. Uh, one of them was Nicholas Blombergen, who actually uh, worked on one of the finest applications of laser that is non-linear optics and obtained Nobel Prize later on. So, uh, uh, all these uh, names that are written and the milestones uh, that they have achieved. Uh, one should uh, really appreciate that okay and that is my aim and that is the reason i am putting this uh, brief history uh, talking about it today uh, now uh, after making this uh, measure uh, townes and uh, Schwalow wrote a paper in 1958 which is a you know uh, one of the finest paper uh, that they wrote in physical review, the journal physical review, uh, where they actually uh, showed that it is possible to convert a maser into a laser that is so called optical maser. That was the term that was used at that point of time that optical maser and Townes and Schwalow showed that optical maser is possible. And uh, another person Gordon Gould, he was also trying to do the same thing and he chalked out his plan to uh, you know form this optical maser or laser and he even uh, gave this uh, beautiful name laser. He is the guy who used or uttered this term for the first time at light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation in 1959 in a conference where he was presenting his paper and uh, you can see on your screen that uh, a copy of the notebook of uh, Gordon Gould where he has described how one can actually give make this laser. But till then no luck with a laser. Finally in 1960 uh, a scientist called Theodore Maiman who is a physicist, he ultimately got lucky and 
made the first optical laser. He used a crystal of a ruby to get a output in the visible range that is at 694 nanometer and got it to laser. And that was the first instance when people saw that yes, laser is actually possible. So, uh, he uh, got a something called a uh, pulsed Luby laser that is the light does not come out continuously, it comes in pulse. So, it comes and off, comes on and off, on and off. So, they comes as a train of you know bunch of photons. So, uh, just to show you that what was the first instrument that he used to form this laser. So, I have given you uh, uh, two images, one is the image of the ruby laser that he formed on your left side and uh, on the right bottom you have the components of this laser and uh, you know you, ca you can get this images uh, in way very easily, I have taken it from Wikipedia and uh, uh, this is Theodore Maiman. After that there were you know a huge effort to build lasers out of different different materials. So, there are certain criteria that a material should uh, you know satisfy in order to uh, be <coughs> able to work as a laser or produce a laser action. So, uh, one of them was uh, Peter Sorokin who demonstrated uh, in the same year when my man uh, inter, uh, first uh, materialize this ruby laser that uh, uranium can be used to form a laser. And uh, the first gas laser, remember ruby is a solid crystal and uh, the first gas laser came into the picture uh, in the form of helium neon laser by uh, Javan Bennett and Herriot in the 19 uh, in year 1960. And one more important thing is that this helium neon laser which is very often called HINI in short gives a continuous beam of light as opposed to the ruby laser that my man invented which was pulsed in nature. All right. So, let us uh, keep going. So, there are uh, several other works done by different people, uh, some of them I have uh, mentioned in the slides. So, uh, uh, here comes right after one year of its invention, this ruby laser was applied in the treatment of uh, uh, retinal tumor. To destroy a retinal tumor, ruby laser was used. Now, you know, interesting thing is when laser was invented, nobody was sure what they can do with laser. So, they were clueless, they were just trying to make it, but after its uh, you know invention actually turns out that you can apply it to various different places and this is the first example where laser was used in medical science, where they used for destroy uh, retinal tumor using ruby laser. Then uh, there are several other techniques uh, came into the picture, for example, something called Q switching, we will learn about it and mode locking. So, these techniques uh, uh, did become uh, available people were you know working hard to develop uh, a better laser different types of lasers. And one of the lasers that finds a wide applicability is uh, yttrium aluminum garnet or in short YAG laser. So, uh, this YAG laser were first made in 1962 in the Bell Labs. Uh, Ultrafast lasers, uh, you know, found its uh, 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 boost when this uh, mode locking technique uh, was uh, built. Uh, and uh, uh, carbon dioxide laser was invented uh, by Kumar Patel in 1964, which is one of the uh, most important laser for industrial applications, I talked about this you know cutting, welding, pinning, cladding, everything is basically done using carbon dioxide laser because it gives a huge power. 
uh, India Glazer came into the picture in 1964 and uh, laser mode locking and phase locking was done in 1965. Uh, Several you know Nobel Prize were awarded to the physicists who have been working toward this you know laser development. Uh, Charles Cow was one of them uh, who received a uh, Nobel Prize in 2009. Uh, now first dye laser, which is a solution phase uh, you know uh, gain medium, was developed by Sorokin and Lankard in 1966. We will talk about dye laser quite a bit. Uh, there are other kinds of laser for example, Excima laser was uh, invented in 1970 and in this way you know several different other lasers have been built so far and the field of you know laser technology is quite quite uh, advanced nowadays. So I hope I could tell you uh, uh, about uh, the brief history of the laser development. So in the next class we will start looking at uh, the principles of laser action. Thank you very much.